This gets it states, everything in the story is entirely true, only the names are made up for protection. I have a font of spiders, which represent my love for fear. Too bad this led to the end of me. All of the recordings you see here are just voices, except for when it's just me. Let's begin with our story, shall we? Imagine it's a normal day in middle school, but suddenly your friend finds an advertisement for a weird circus. Guys, you'll never know what I got. I was in my brother's room and I found this ad for a freak show called Cirque du Freak. Let's all pitch in our money and buy the tickets. Steve, can you do it? Well, my mom's out tonight, but I'll see what I can do. Steve's late. I knew he wouldn't be able to get those tickets. Watch, he's not even going to show up at school today. What a wimp. Gee, thanks guys, but I have some good news. And some bad news. The good news is, I got the tickets. The bad news? I only got two. I think we should have this contest thing to see who can get the two tickets. What do you think? Fine by me, Steve. You get one of these tickets, so, and about the contest. Let's have Steve throw the real tickets and scrap paper in the air and see who can catch the actual ticket. Simple enough. That sounds like a good idea. Let's do it now. Wait guys, let me put on my camera. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. I don't have it. Me neither. Wait, that means... I... I won. Okay Darren, here's the plan. Stay over at my house tonight so we can go. Make sure to bring money and do not tell anyone about this. Pew pew! Pew pew! Kaboom! That ought to teach the bad guys a lesson. What are you doing, Darren? Are you being stupid? Stop it. It's time for us to go. Fine. The walk to the abandoned cedar was rather intense. When we finally got there, we saw that the cedar was completely barren. Until a man confronted us, whose name was Mr. Tall. He turned out to be the ringleader. You two lost? Ah, I see you have no tickets for tonight. These seats are great. It's amazing how we don't have any human giraffes in front of us. Good evening. My name is Mr. Tall. Welcome to Cirque du Freak, home of the world's finest, marvelous creatures known to man. This is an ancient circus that has toured the world for over 500 years traveling the world and showing the earth these grotesque creatures. Although our lineup has changed throughout the years, we still show the world's finest. Mind you, the circus is not for the easily scared. So leave now while you have the chance. Now, with that out of the way, let's begin with our first act, The Wolfman. The werewolf is a woman. Well, not literally. It just bit this woman's hand off. Not that that's any better, though. Luckily, Mr. Tall did some voodoo voodoo and magically fixed it back. It made no sense. I will repeat this again. This show is not for the faint-hearted. If you do not want any accidents like that to happen again, then leave. Now, with the remaining viewers of the show, let's introduce the next act, Ramis Two Bellies. Incredible. He ate pretty much everything and anything, from an entire buffet to glass statues. The next act was some dude named Alexander Ribs. The name fit him perfectly. All the guy had was ribs. He was one of those contortionists I've read about. You know, people who can bend their bodies in weird and unusual ways. This chick was just gross. Her face seemed normal and quite beautiful, but as soon as she started her disgusting act, her beauty vanished. Want to know what she did? She grew and sucked back in a beard.
hands, it's pretty boring. He just bragged and showed off all the stupid things he could do with his hands. Uh, compared to the other acts, this one is pretty weak. And now, we here at Cirque du Freak would like to introduce Mr. Krebsley and Madame Akja. I would like to have this room be completely silent, for if it is not, Madame Akja might kill one of us with her poisonous bites. Darren, do you have any idea who that guy is? He's... he's... Uh, I'll tell you later. After that weird occurrence with Steve, the next talk that appeared was Gersitis. I swear she could have been married to Ramit's two bellies. They seem to be perfect for one another. Gersa could chew apart virtually anything, even a working chainsaw. Her teeth seemed to be indestructible. That was the end of all the acts that we knew of. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the show led by Cirque du Freak performers. If you would like to purchase any souvenirs to commemorate the night, please sign up here. If not, the exit is to the right of the building. Hey, Darren, why don't you go back to my house first? I need to do something. Wait, what? Steve! I couldn't help but wonder what Steve was up to, so I followed him, and it turned out he was talking to that Krepsley dude. I know what you are. At first, I didn't believe it, but now, I'm certain. You're, you're Verhorsten, right? The all-famous vampire? And what do you want to do about that? Turn me in? Do you want money? Jewels? Uh, neither. I want you to turn me into a vampire. I've been waiting for this day for ages, and to think that it would finally come. Um, although apprentices aren't something that I would take the pleasure in having, I have no interest. What about your friends, boy? Your family? Or that boy you came to the show with? Aren't you going to miss them? Well, I'll miss Darren, but as for my family and friends, I'm ready to leave them all behind for this life. Besides, my mother doesn't even want me. She thinks that I'm just a nuisance anyways, so why spend any more time with her? Very well, boy. Come here. Let me test out your blood. Blah! Go away! You'll never become a vampire! Your blood is evil! But... but why? What do you mean, evil? Vampires aren't what you think, child. We are gentle when we want to be. All that you want to do is kill. What's the point of being a vampire if you can't? Hunt. Mark my words, I will become a vampire hunter and hunt you down for not accepting me. Steve ran away immediately. All that was going through my brain was... What? What? Steve wanted to become a vampire? Mr. Kripsley is the vampire? I couldn't believe my own best friend wanted to become a monster. Hey Darren, why didn't you come to my house last night, dude? I went home and you weren't there. Oh, um, I wasn't feeling that good, so I decided to go home. I mean, the night was pretty epic and insane. Yeah. It was too late. Steve already didn't trust me on this lie that I had told, so he became very wary of me. And suddenly, a substantial amount of distrust had formed. I mean, how could I tell him that I overheard his conversation about Mr. Krepsley and wanting to become a vampire? Once he hears something like that, you just can't go back. So guys, tell us, how did the freak show go? Was it a fake? Well, it definitely wasn't a fake, that's for sure. I mean, a lady got her hand bitten off, then put back on. No way! Did any exciting acts come on then? There's this one dude called Mr. Krepsley and his poisonous spider, Madame Octa. What he did was he controlled Madame Octa through a flute. It was amazing. Oh, come on, Darren. We all know he didn't control her through the flute. Mr. Krepsley controlled Madame Octa with his mind. Telekinesis. The flute was probably used to get her attention. Any moron with a brain could control her that way. Wait, so anyone can control Madame Octa just by thinking of the commands? Well, in theory, yeah. Um. What Steve said seemed true, and I thought maybe, just maybe, Madame Octa could be mine. Yeah, it sounded berserk, but I knew that night that I was going to steal her and keep her as a pet was mine. I had no idea what I just said. I was nuts. It was as if Madame Octa was there lying on a silver platter for me to take. I'm crazy, but who cared? I had Madame Octa. She was mine. And as long as Mr. Krepsley didn't come and take her back at night, I thought I would have been fine. It's been over a week since I've taken Madame Octa from Krepsley. By now, the circus should have left town, and I should be safe. Now, Madame Octa, let's go over your usual routine. Let's start. Hey, Darren, are you there? 
Oh, sh- um, wait a minute. Yeah, come in. Okay, Darren, why are you avoiding me? At first, I just put up with it, but it hurt, man. I mean, you didn't talk to me during lunch, and you didn't do anything with me during our time together. What happened, dude? It's just... It's just irritating. It... Sorry, it's just that I've been trying to do something, and... Do what? Promise you can keep a secret? Darren, what do you take me for? A gossip girl? Now tell me. <sighs> I stole Madame Okta. Uh, what? I stole Madame Okta. Are you freaking crazy? He could kill you! He won't do anything, though. I stole Madame Okta a week ago, and no one came to take her. Here, let me show you the trick she can do. After hearing about the whole telekinesis theory on controlling her, I found out that it does work. Watch. Oh my god. How did you make her- This is incredible! Here, let me- let her climb on me! Oh, well, fine, but don't make any movements or any sounds. I should have never agreed to let Steve touch Madame Okta. My sister Annie marched into the room, and in shock, Madame Okta bit Steve, paralyzing him. Steve! Annie, why did you come in? I told Mom not to let anyone into this room when I'm practicing. Why? Why is there a spider here? Is Steve okay? He's, he's fine. And the spider, I got her from a person. I'll tell you the rest later. What's wrong with Steve? Why isn't he moving? We need to tell Mom. We need to tell... Wait. Keep this a secret from Mom. We'll wait for another five minutes. If he doesn't wake up, then let me tell Mom. Just, just please don't tell her about the spider, okay? Fine, but if anything happens to Steve, I'm telling. This is all my fault. Only one person could fix this, and as much as I hate to admit it, it's Mr. Crepsley. I went back to the abandoned theater tonight to see if he was still there. Who is it that calls for me? Ah, the boy who came with the other adolescent. Tell me, how is Madame Okta doing? Or rather, I should be asking, how is the boy doing after being bitten? You, you knew? Why didn't you stop her? Never mind the details regarding the incident. Tell me, what do you want me to do about the boy? I want you to help Steve. His condition is worsening and he needs to get better. What's in it for me? Honestly, if he can get Steve to be the way he was before getting bitten, anything. I can use an assistant. But, but didn't you say that you didn't like assistance when you were talking to Steve? So you were there that night. Although, I did say that. It is a hassle not to not have any help during the day. Then, then what does a vampire assistant do? They wait on the vampire's hand if, and foot, gathering supplies during the day, getting laundry, food, anything really. Do you promise to save Steve? A vampire never lies. If so, then fine. I'll be your assistant. He took his hands into mine like it was nothing. Never felt more pain in my life. Steve, you better be worth it. After the ritual, we immediately went to the hospital to give Steve the antidotes. It is great that you sought me out before it was too late. Another day and he would have been dead. This should do the trick. Ugh. Who's there? Quick, Darren, grab onto me. Mr. Krepsley, I'm sorry, but I can't go with you. Fool, you'll never survive on your own. It was a given situation. I threw Steve's blanket on the nurse and ran for it. The next morning seemed to go by with a flash until lunch came around. Ow, I'm, I'm bleeding, dude! Why would you kick me in the knee instead of the soccer ball? I didn't know what came over me. After seeing the blood oozing out of his knees, I just... I just lost all my reasoning as it comes to my demonic ways. Darren, what are you doing? Ew, are you... are you sucking his blood? Uh, <laughs> I'm a vampire. Rawr! <laughs> You're such a joke, Darren. Sure. I thought I was capable of lasting longer in the human world, but I couldn't believe I drank my friend's blood because of my newfound instincts. How much time did I have until I would talk to someone else the same way? I had to go see Mr. Krebsley at the theater again. Mr. Krebsley, I can't stay in the human world anymore. I thought I would be strong enough to be able to survive and live normally, but... I attacked one of my best friends and tried to drink my sister's blood. I'll be honest, it took a lot longer than I thought it would for you to come to me. Uh, very well, I'll take you out of your cruel human world. Do I just run away from home? 
No, I'm afraid it's not that easy. Running away would only lead to people looking for you. What you have to do is die. A week from today, on Friday. I will have you take a medicine that will make you have the appearance of being dead. But, don't worry, it just slows your heart and lungs down by a thousand percent. From there, you will be given a broken neck. You won't feel it. And the examiners will label you as dead as an accident from, because you fell out of a window. Is there really no other way? Sadly, no. I'm giving you a week to say your goodbyes. You will not get any longer than that. Until then, au revoir. And with that, he disappeared into the night with no trace of ever being in the theater. Although it's regrettable, Friday night finally came around, and my goodbyes had to be said for the last time. Before I got too emotional to let them about everything, I gave them one last hug, and with that, I went upstairs to meet Mr. Cuxley, and as planned, he was there waiting. Ready? Yes, but can you hold on to this back for me? It contains my journal and family pictures, things that won't be missed. Very well, let us begin then. The night cracking was easy, but the whole throw out of the window idea was just painful. I waited there like an idiot until morning. When the neighbors saw my body, they straight away went to go tell my parents. After being put into a coffin in my living room, many guests came to give me their regards. But before they left, someone stuck into my house and stuck something in my mouth and promptly left after. It was weird. And here lies Darren Shan, a young boy who was robbed of his life too soon. May he rest in peace and fulfill his dreams in a better place. If you're ever going to fake your desk and sit in a coffin for hours, bring some kind of entertainment. Seriously, the most boring hours of my life. Silence and darkness. Well, anyways, sometime around 1 a.m., I started to hear digging noises outside of the coffin. Finally, the lid opened, and up there stood Mr. Krepsley, covered in dirt. Took you long enough. Sorry for the long wait. Now go wander around the graveyard where I set everything back to how it was before. you only be a distraction here. I walked around aimlessly until I saw a figure approaching me in the distance. Ha! Huh. S steve what are you doing? I knew it. You are a vampire. The marks on your fingers, the way your mouth was still salivating after you supposedly died, it all pointed to you being one. When, when did you find out? I found out a week or two before you died. I saw the marks on your fingers, and remembered that somewhere in my book about vampires, there was a way to become one of those, those exact scars. I snuck into your house a few nights ago and tested out my theory, to see if you were really dead. And guess what? You weren't. Darren, you there? Uh, yeah. Just keep doing what you're doing. Okay now, Steve, what do you want? What I want? I will tell you. I wanted to become a vampire, but I was forever denied of that. You robbed my future from me, didn't you? Well, let me tell you this. I will become a vampire hunter to kill off scum like you. Although I may not be strong enough now, I'll become stronger than any of you, and I will annihilate all vampires from the planet. What? Steve, can't you just put this behind you? Why can't you just be friends again? You're getting this all wrong. I became a vampire, so... So what? Do I need to tell you? I've always wanted to become a vampire, and I bet you already knew that. The only thing I thought I was good for was taken away from me by you, my ex-best friend. Whatever we had in the past is now over. I'm going to kill all vampires, and you'll be my first, Darren Shan. Goodbye. Disheartened by Steve's intent on destroying all vampires, including me, I went back to where Mr. Krepsley was, trying not to be overcome by the emotions. Ready to go? Yes, I am. How about you? Yeah, but can I just ask a few questions? Sure. What are they? Do you ever get lonely? I mean, we age one year for every ten human years. Can't we ever settle down and start a family or make permanent friends? Sadly, that is one thing that will be missed. We have to keep moving forever or else someone would get suspicious of us. After all, we are the ones who don't age. Although it will be hard at the beginning, it's something you'll have to get used to soon. So what you're saying is, is that all we can really do at this point is to accept our fate, quit looking over our shoulders in fear, and just keep moving forward? Yes, exactly. 
Now I'm kind of hungry. How about we go get some food? If you know what I mean. And with that, we sat down into the night in search of our prey. Me putting Steve's starts behind me. Looking into the future with clear and determined eyes. Darren, don't play with your camera all day. Come on! Uh, coming? <laughs> 